There was, once upon a time, an author that enjoyed doing his writing on the beach beside the ocean. Before he set about doing his writing, though, he liked to go for a long walk. One day, while going about his walk along the shore, he noticed a person in the distance. It looked like this person was dancing, and the author smiled while pondering the idea of someone who would be dancing at this early hour of the day. He became quite curious and continued to head in that direction. As he got closer, he realized that it was a young woman and she wasn't dancing, but was instead reaching down to the shore and picking something up and gently throwing it into the ocean. The author eventually caught up to the woman. Good morning! May I ask what exactly it is that you're doing? The young woman looked up, hesitated for a moment and then responded. I'm throwing starfish back into the ocean. The author is a little confused. I suppose I should have asked, why are you throwing starfish back into the ocean? The woman replies, the sun is up and the tide is going out. If I don't throw them back in, they'll die. But, young lady, don't you realize that there are miles upon miles of beach and starfish all along it? You can't possibly make a difference. The woman listened politely, picked up another starfish, and threw it into the sea and said, it made a difference for that one. Once upon a time, there was a man who was known for his love of exploration and adventure, and he would always journey solo. While on these adventures, he contemplated about many things and realized that the external world was an enormous resource for those reflections. His adventures often took him to the heights, upon great summits where the beauty of the earth could be seen for vast distances. He wondered to himself, I have sought answers to my questions for quite some time while traveling to the heights, and have discovered much. Then, what of the depths? What more might be found there? After careful consideration, he decided that he would begin to see what he could discover in the ocean. Unlike the mountains where one could often see both the valleys and the peaks, from the ground the ocean was simply an enormous surface, and one had to dive into it to witness all that was hidden beneath. This alone created a profound revelation that if something were to be kept secret, it would be far better to keep it in the ocean as opposed to the summit of a lofty mountaintop. And so he began to dive, every day going as far as possible and seeing what could be discovered. Some who lived in nearby areas, hearing of this individual, became interested in what exactly he was doing and the reasons why. They questioned him, Why do you dive into the ocean every day? What do you hope to find in there? He replied, Answers. I'm looking to find answers. This perplexed many of them, but a few stayed around to listen some more because they wanted to know what he meant by this. And so he began to explain how his adventures were not just about the external, but about a much larger quest that could not be seen with one's physical eyes. There had to be far more to life than what was seen and felt on the surface, and he was willing to risk everything to find out what that was. As he would speak about his discoveries to those who gathered around each day, there were also always those who could be considered flouters that would mock and ridicule the man's efforts, and even make fun of those who paid attention to what he was saying. These jeerers would smirk and condescendingly remark that it was a waste of his life, and anyone who listened to his so-called discoveries was an idiot. They would even go so far as to wish upon him death, praying that he would drown and never return again. This ridicule and judgment only had the opposite effect of its intention, for those judgments simply acted as a catalyst for the man to dive into the depths even further, and for even more individuals to question what this reality was all about. For clearly, something was definitely wrong. Each day the man was able to hold his breath a little more and dive to where it became ever darker, taking a little longer to adjust his eyes each time in that darkness. The darker it became and the deeper the dive, 
the more there was to find out. The years went by, and many more waited on the surface each day for the man's return. Both those who felt the truth in what was being said, and those who jeered, scoffed, and belittled every effort that was being made. Some of the judgmental would often be among those on the beach and pretend to be interested, doing what they could to befriend certain individuals only to lure in those they felt were easy targets and gaslight them once they felt that a certain trust was built up. The strategy of these bullies was to obviously cast shadows of doubt everywhere that they could. In seeing this occur, the man saw in these judgmental ones another obvious analogy. The darkness doesn't just exist underneath the surface. It is everywhere in the reality we find ourselves in, and it exists inside of many individuals that are around us all of the time. This darkness is obviously a force of intelligence, something that is consistently looking to steer us all away from what was being sought, away from the truth. If it is darkness doing this, then that's exactly what this force must be trying to do, keep us in the dark, while constantly lying and telling us that we are already in the light. By this time, the fears within many individuals who would wait each day on the beach was being noticeably quelled, and those who dispelled their fears were doing dives of their own and verifying the truth for themselves. Being less afraid each day to ask the big questions for themselves. For this was also the message that was brought forth all the time, that one must do their own diving into the darkest parts of themselves and shine upon that darkness their own inner light. In noticing this change in many, the forces of darkness became ever more agitated and deranged in their attempts to divert those seeking the truth, and this just further proved out that there was, without any doubt whatsoever, something clearly wrong going on. The man knew that to get to the bottom of the situation, he must actually reach the bottom and dive further down than ever before. He felt that there was an ultimate destination there, a place where no one had ever reached because one had to be willing to lose everything to get there. So, down he went, going further and further until he knew that he had reached a point of no return. He could not hold his breath long enough to go back up to the surface, and there was no way to be certain that if he kept going, he would find anything else. But he felt that there was no choice. He had to try. Giving every effort that he could, he propelled himself into the abyss until he had almost nothing left to give, and suddenly saw something unexplainable something that no words could ever describe. Finding a source of renewed strength, he made his way to what could be called a set of gates, though they were not any type of gates that he had ever seen or heard of before. Without realizing it at first, there was a clearing at these gates, and the man was able to breathe again. How am I able to breathe again? This is impossible! Nothing is impossible in the kingdom, a voice said to him. But from where? He could see no one there. Who are you? And where are you? This question was asked, but the man already knew the answer to his question, for the voice was carried from within. It was then said to him, It's not time for you to enter. There are others who are ready to leave the darkness of where you came from for good and you must bring to them the message of what you have seen and what is soon to occur. You will be hated and ridiculed by many for this message, and your journey is going to be more difficult than anything you have ever faced. The man was overwhelmed. But I feel I've already done the impossible. Look how much effort it took just to get here. The voice said, You haven't even begun to imagine what the impossible is. After a very long talk and being given the answers he had always been looking for, the man was sent back. 
He began to talk about the message he was given and tasked to deliver. It confused many, yet for a few it brought about much needed clarification. Much was revealed, including exactly who the Master of Darkness was. This unveiled the Archon Controller called Death, who was no longer able to hide itself in the shadows, for it had been exposed. Thus, at this point, the strategy of darkness and evil was to prop itself up as a figure who pretended to care about the ills of the world that it caused, while compounding its asinine efforts of gaslighting, bullying, and mocking any who talked about the kingdom of the heart and those who would soon be walking along an impossible path towards that kingdom. In fact, darkness exposed itself by only mocking the heart, and exalting its death creation of the false light of the mind as the ultimate and only truth. This clown Messiah couldn't help itself, and in true abuser fashion, was openly and publicly abusive to those genuinely seeking truth, while pretending to be charming and empathetic to those who believed in the blind alleys of its fake half-truths that led one straight back into the arms of death itself. Wait for your natural death! Then say you don't consent to death's grip to escape this clown world, said the clown lurker, who was now doing its utmost to disguise itself while feigning its pretend care to as many as would listen to the piles of garbage coming forth from its forked tongue mouth. And many eventually did listen, for they were not ready to leave the trappings of the circus and all of its carnal carnival pleasures and disease-infested amusements. These many could also not see the illogical aspect of waiting for their death to escape death, and therefore continued to go into the false light which was now exposed as being the false electrical light of the mind. There were many believers in the Dark One's kingdom, and many individuals carrying the false light of their second sight that heard the truth kept erroneously thinking to themselves that the message of the heart was talking about suicide and would stir the pot of confusion that way too because it was simply unable to listen to the real message while simultaneously binge-watching whatever latest trash was being brought to them on the thousand and one entertainment platforms of mass distraction. These individuals who loved following the path of the false light were not ready in any regard to take anything seriously whatsoever, and in their ultimately selfish dispositions, proved this out continuously with every one of their actions every single day. And thus began the great divide between the few who were ready to leave the nuthouse insanity of death system of hell once and for all by walking along the path of a seemingly impossible opportunity and the many who would remain stuck inside of this shit show. To be continued. When one is done with this place, and I mean truly done with it, they are not going to be clinging on to their material possessions and way of life in the hopes that things in this dumpster fire realm are going to be turning around at any minute, believing in agonizing desperation that the generations to come are going to live in some technological utopia while continuing such beautiful life-affirming activities such as shopping for their next Bangladeshi child labor slave produced sweater at Walmart and then grabbing a diarrhea creating GMO lace gut destroyer fecal matter burger from Clown Donald's. Citizens working dead end, spirit killing jobs to pay war funding taxes to tyrannical and oppressive governments so that they can bring forth more children to get educated by alcoholic teachers who snort cocaine every weekend, beg for forgiveness and pews to pedophile priests, and watch drag queen contest shows in between playing video games with an orgy of virtual violence, horror, and sexual perversity, just in the hopes that when their children get older, they can do the same thing in a perpetually endless cycle of absurdity, obscenity, and debauchery. But, because there are some that have been dealt the cards in this reality that come with an extra large pair of rose-colored glasses, along with a padded middle-to-upper-class lifestyle and bookshelves filled with nonsensical New Age positivity bullshit, those in the greatest denial can, for the moment, just continue living in their insulated and extremely narrow-minded bubble reality and ignore the entire travesty that this place is, 
All while believing that this rotting infestation just needs a few minor adjustments and a couple of different child trafficking politicians in office and everything is going to be just peaches and blueberry cream in no time flat. The blind believe that in their zend out state of bliss and pseudo-intellectual enlightenment that everything is just going to somehow turn out for the best because they are waving their magical arms around that are filled with rainbow bright superpowers and have commanded it to be so. That same idiotic Zen guru garbage has furthermore created another set of false beliefs which tells everyone that this hell ride is just as it should be and is simply about spiritual evolution and everyone just needs to shut up and graciously accept the grand gift of death. And one is then going to be catapulted into an alternative realm of bliss and never-ending peace just because they have commanded it to be so. In case anyone wasn't able to put it together, things don't work that way on this side. So go figure that they don't work that way on the other side either. Same coin, just two sides. There's a lot more to this than can be fathomed. And no one is getting just how damn serious this situation is. The premise of this smile like nothing is happening while the entire earth is burning to the ground philosophy is tandem to the belief that when one ignores cancer, it will somehow just disappear. The evidence continues to pile up every day faster than ever that this is not the case. And yet there are still so many that refuse to observe the obvious. Which is exactly why the message is going to have to be delivered now in a way that is completely and utterly undeniable. It is hoped that everyone is enjoying their last minute of bliss ignorance because the full weight of the truth is going to be as heavy as it gets. And that heaviness is not going to be delivered on this satanic platform. When I start walking, I don't care what happens to this channel. It'll be completely irrelevant. No, the total weight of the truth is going to be brought forth on the streets, on the walk, and out in the open for absolutely everyone to hear. It's not going to be cloaked in secrecy so that maybe an individual with enough effort or sheer luck can find their way to its message. No, that's the sick and deranged method of death's system. The eternal kingdom doesn't hide anything in the dark because there is no darkness in the true kingdom of the heart. One doesn't have to fight tooth and nail for a piece of the truth with the heart because the truth is everywhere. That's what God truly is. Good. God is good and evil is not. And those who believe in this satanic system of darkness and scientific nihilism are just believing in a nuthouse of mockery and lies. So that's also why it's time for full disclosure. The total revelation. No one has any idea of how dark and evil this place actually is. This whole shit show and the consequences of it are going to be announced in a total unveiling of this trash pile disease hell. As I said before, how anyone can believe in any of it is astounding to say the least. There is no saving this disaster. At all. After a full house is a royal flush. And that's what one does with shit. It gets flushed. Still, the message isn't being heard because one's petty desires want to fan the message away because it's undesirable to listen to, as if the consequences of unlimited pain caused by this nightmare just disappear because one doesn't want to deal with those consequences. We really are at the point now where those who have been enjoying the full-on illusionary 3D view of their rose-colored false reality are wanting to shoot and kill anyone who is telling them that what they are looking at and believing in is a dream world built upon a foundation of quicksand. To the ones wearing those glasses, it makes a lot of sense that if one kills the messenger, the truth of the message disappears along with it. That's certainly not the case.
To create an example, the citizens of a town were warned that a huge forest fire was burning everything down and heading in their direction, and this news angered those citizens. So, instead of responding to the problem, they decided it was in their best interest to hang the messenger. A few hours later, their town was completely destroyed, but at least they had a few more hours of zend out bliss, and apparently that's all that mattered to them. So, that's where we're at. And the question is, what will it take for everyone to finally get it? There's no future to look forward to in this situation. Do you get it? Well, the equation is going to have to be forced until the possibility of willful denial is no longer an option. The bullies, mockers, deniers of the heart, narcissists, and believers in this perverse realm will continue to ridicule this fact until the very last moment when there cannot be denial. At that moment, the forces of evil will shift their strategy to one of extrication and the cutting of their losses, in the hopes that they will be able to save as much of their disaster piece as possible, all while continuing to do their utmost to make those who see through the facade feel inferior, ashamed, embarrassed, and worthless. That's what evil does, and it's an expert at it. Its calling card is to focus on particular individuals and gang up on them. Mock, belittle, laugh at. A true predator in every sense of the word. Stalking you, lurking, completely obsessed. Waiting on every opportunity to tear you down. Once you become the target, you very much do become their obsession, and they reveal exactly who and what they are at that point. These dark actors gather around themselves as many as they can to create a collective and gang up on their targets and tear them down through verbal and physical abuse, and oftentimes both. It is for this exact reason that the heart and the true kingdom is about total discernment. Just as one should never just allow anyone into their heart to wreak havoc upon their own individuality, so too does the kingdom of the eternal take extreme caution, else it ends up just like this garbage dump in no time at all. This is the exact reason why correcting one's vision is so very important, regardless of any disdain or disagreement towards this, simply because one doesn't want it to be that way. No one arrives unannounced either without being considered a lurker, a stalker, and one who is wanting to destroy the kingdom from the inside out. When the wrong ideas are put within, they inevitably become expressed without. If any want to comprehend why everything is so distorted, wrong, and upside down in this realm, this is the exact reason why. As was stated before, the wrong idea was implanted, a gift of insanity given to the heart, which reduced it, along with everything contained in the heart, down to ashes. Why is there so much hatred, violence, destructiveness, and a general dog-eat-dog -dog nature to the earth, including in the animal kingdom? Because the whole earth is the heart and the heart has contained an incorrect vision given to it by an imposter for a very long time, the consequences of which are seen everywhere. This is why vision is not just important, it is in fact everything. The kingdom truly is within, but its vision is reflected externally. As within, so without. The vision must be corrected. The so-called warriors in the devil's army are the progenitors of mockery, and anyone is able to discern them by their fruits. They would never give their life in service to another, but they are certainly ready to throw anyone under the bus to save themselves. That's what selfishness is all about. They are the destroyers of kingdoms. Tearing someone down is effortless. Building them up through support requires strength and vision. 
The one who tears another down is weak and foolish, while also demonstrating their complete ineptitude towards all matters of the heart. All of this being stated because for the few who will be walking on the narrow gate, the endurance of your spirit is going to be tested and pushed to profound extremes in ways that many are currently not comprehending. Because the weight of how serious this situation is, is not being grasped yet. There's still too much comfort and denial happening. This is why I'm repeating myself about certain things, such as snapping out of any state of denial one might still be in, and to be ridding yourself of all the distractions of this place. What are you doing every single day to prepare yourself? An impossible opportunity is going to be put forward, which is going to undeniably be presented to the entire world. And this impossible opportunity is about physically demonstrating that one is truly and legitimately ready to walk away from this incorrect hell realm, which is exactly why it entails an actual walk as has already been mentioned before. A very, very long walk, which only an incredibly small percentage are going to be ready and willing to take on. To walk away from it all. One must be ready to carry their own cross. How else to demonstrate and prove this? Simply holding a belief of intention isn't a demonstration of anything. One has to put meat behind their words. Actions are what speaks to eternity. Talk is as cheap as it gets, and at the end of the day, entirely meaningless. Death takes everything away from every last one of us, without exception. It leaves you with nothing. If you believe that this impossible moment is about clinging on to your material possessions and this way of life, then you're not listening and really not taking anything that is being said seriously. The few who are truly all in and ready to take everything seriously are going to be ready to leave it all behind while realizing that they are going to be hated by the whole world. To those few, get ready to be spit on and completely despised. Why? Because the serious few will be walking on the path of truth while many want to cling on to the system of lies and deceptions. It is realized that some of you listening are physically incapable of walking, but this is absolutely no reason to fall into a state of hopelessness. Remember, one must believe that the impossible is possible. The kingdom of the heart is all about impossibility. When one believes in the truth and the heart, Everything is possible. This reality is soon going to get very dark and very ugly. When the taps of the spirit that provide it all for everyone are entirely shut off, it's going to become very obvious in short order just how few friends one has. Just how meaningless that word love really is to so many. It's easy to pretend that one is a nice person who is willing to go the distance for others when the times are good, but that incredibly thin veneer of civility quickly fades away and disappears when shit goes sideways. The quarantine and vaccine push? Well, that was simply the pregame warm-up. That was like watching a basketball team doing a few layups in their track pants before a preseason exhibition match. There really is no proper analogy that can be made to encapsulate what is to come because it's too enormous. But no one's doing themselves any favors by falling back into the cave at this time. Those who are listening and are now pissed off at the speaker should instead be pissed off at themselves for wasting so much of their precious time. And from this point forward, be spending the little of it that there is left by looking into the mirror of their own individuality and asking themselves why they still aren't ready to truly take everything seriously. When you treat everything like a joke, you get treated like a joke. 
and continuing to believe in any of the ideas of a circus is an absolute farce. Don't you see it yet? The clowns have been sent in, and they're running the show. The presenters are laying it on thick now, and the headlines are constantly screaming out, there is no future here. That's why, in a way, it's so hilarious. The world is the Titanic sinking, and the masses are building their futures on the ship as if there is absolutely nothing wrong happening. There are none so blind as those who refuse to see. Ignoring everything critical until it's too late is never a bright idea. There are always going to be consequences. And just as disease begins to percolate inside of the body, inevitably the revelation of that disease is forced upon the individual, regardless of how much denial they're in. The Zendo positivist creates a willful denial because it's declared to be just too negative to acknowledge. There are those who are the real listeners of the heart who understand that your concerns have always been treated as worthless by this place. You've had tremendous and significant spiritual insights that have changed everything for you, and these were dismissed and quickly brushed away by others as being insignificant and unworthy of the effort that was necessary for their occurrence to take place. Spiritual invalidation is a constant card that the force of darkness and death plays, and this is why those with the deepest spiritual concerns, which obviously include the physical situation, have always been called too negative. That's the tight grip that evil tries to maintain upon everyone, and it doesn't want to let that grip go. A grip that chokes and extinguishes the life out of everything. Evil is also two-faced, like the abusive boyfriend that beats the shit out of his girlfriend in private, yet is able to convince their friends, family, and strangers in public that he's charming, caring, sensitive, and romantic. Fear and constant gaslighting keeps the abused individual locked into a dead-end situation, unable to find the courage within to see the way out. That's because the abuser is a prison warden that doles out a hefty dose of torture, assault, and molestation on the daily. Evil is a tormentor, intimidator, and oppressor. But since it has been outed, it can no longer hide its true face which is why evil will now declare pride in its insanity and abusiveness, which has been obvious from the degeneracy that is constantly paraded around in the streets and in its twisted forms of entertainment. Perversity is celebrated and honored, and the sacred is scorned and laughed at, and those who love their perversities gather instruction from those who reinforce their own masturbatory ideas that their selfish pursuits are somehow beautiful and justified. This is obviously one of the major challenges of this place, since there exists in this realm's twisted psychology the concept of confirmation bias, which, when preferable, is utilized as an ideological weapon of argumentation against those who are edging towards legitimate truth and finding consensus among other individuals who have done the same work. The abuser has designed it this way so that it can create the debate that no matter what, there will always be a group that one can find which confirms their bias, and that there can never be anything which can ever be called truth. In its convoluted and intricately abstract methodology, death has created this very effective and complex argument to ensure a constant stream of doubt surrounds anyone who questions the legitimacy of this prison realm they find themselves in. That doubt can persist until one develops enough courage to go beyond the fears and uncertainties that a world of lies has impressed upon them for far too long. Then one knows exactly why resistance is assistance, because one has been holding on to this realm through their desires while at the same time fighting against it. One cherishes and clings on to death's ideas, carnal pleasures, and vacuous pursuits, and simultaneously abhors its pains, travesties, diseases, and ultimate end result. No one can be free from a prison in which they wish to be served by. Death both serves you and takes from you. The circle of its circus is complete. Waiting for the end result of death and believing you can be free of its system just because you want to be 
is the same type of strategy as those in the town who killed the messenger, telling them that a fire was coming to burn down their town. Sure, it'll buy you a bit of time, but that's about all that it's going to do. In a complete realization that can only happen beyond the doubts and fears, one sees that this place inevitably and continuously takes everything away. And thus, before it's too late, one instead during an undeniable and impossible opportunity of an eternity, willfully walks away from the circus, no longer believing in its disease and grotesqueness. No more assistance, no more resistance. Complete neutrality to this false system. One dies to their second sight of total blindness, which has been the Trojan horse gifted to them by an imposter, and no longer desires a single thing that death has to offer, and therefore sends it all back. At that moment, the paradox is reversed. The tables have turned, and one begins an impossible walk back to the true kingdom. The impossible is possible. Do you see? I'm going to respond to a few questions, but I want to first read a recent comment from the individual going by the handle of Drummer for Hire. I recently had two precious souls ripped from my life in the same day. As I painfully learn how damaging expectations can be, I always lived in the moment and cherished every millisecond of each day. I have experienced great loss before, but this is different. At first, the pain created a sort of hollowness in my heart. Now a raging inferno resides. Although I may have my vision blurred by expectation, I still feel in the heart that it was a deliberate act robbing me of my most sacred. I am beyond all in. I reiterate, one's actions are going to be what eternity listens to. But your words echo what is meant when I have asked, are you on fire for the truth yet? The heart understands the pain that you feel, because this place and its demonic ruler have put us all in the various and random situations that take everything away from us and leave us writhing in pain while it laughs and cackles at its great accomplishment of annihilating the sacred. So yeah, the act of robbing you and everyone else is very much a deliberate one. It's just that a few get this and most simply do not. It's a generalization, but it's a fact nonetheless. Most are completely passive and docile. Some of you have completely missed the point of what was meant by neutrality as well, making it coincide with being subdued and doing nothing about this place. Nope. I repeat, it's always been about giving nothing to death and evil, and retaining and storing everything that one is. Then, when the correct moment arrives, one is able to do everything about the situation and put an end to this hell. And to the few who are finally beginning to see that they are in hell, if you truly are of the heart, then that fire has to be building within you. There is no possible way it can't be. No one who legitimately understands where they are is going to be okay with what has been done to them for only God knows how long. Everyone in here has been treated as a dog slave for longer than can be fathomed tossed around and treated like garbage, suffering untold amounts of abuse and pain that gets wiped out with each bullshit reincarnation because that's what beneficially serves the dark master of this hell. And that doesn't set you on fire? You're okay with that. You don't feel much of anything. If you're still zenned out right now thinking that everything is generally A-okay, then you're still completely blind which is tremendously unfortunate. That's why the New Age garbage pile of nonsense was set up as a form of escapist gibberish for this period of time, to placate one when atrocities are occurring in every single direction. 
So long as those atrocities are not directly affecting an individual, the genes of selfishness remain in control, and an individual can remain completely unconcerned with the entire travesty that is this disease shit show. As painful as loss is, it unfortunately takes loss to snap one out of their false second sight, to finally get what death and evil is truly all about. Death is as serious as it gets. That should be the most obvious thing ever. But the diabolical occult spider queen of this realm has set up designs and fake beliefs about death being a good thing that should be welcomed. What a twisted, sick, deranged, and dark deception. There is nothing good about death. Death is the destroyer of the sacred, which is the heart. It's the destroyer of everything. Death is the nemesis. So, get ready to walk away from it all if you are truly beyond all in. Eternity sees you, my friend, and the kingdom of the heart requires one to walk their talk. If you're completely done with this place and done being a slave for a false deity, only caught in its traps because it sells you some cheap vacuous carnal ride circus thrills, then you're not going to let that inferno be burned out by anything. The heart is the fire and the true light. I'm going to state that many are still treading down dark alleys in the spider's labyrinth and not asking the correct questions, and are thus just remaining in its circles of deception. That's what the occult is really all about, masquerading itself as a beacon of light and truth, when it is in fact just an incredibly devious wealth of rubbish meant to keep one ensnared inside of this mental system of confusion, getting one to constantly chase the next object it places in its maze, like cheese in a mouse trap, keeping you preoccupied with its thousands upon thousands of dead-end corridors, which result in nothing but an accumulation of garbage to sort through. The truth is within, which is the heart. It always has been. There it is. Mystery solved. That simple. Of course, it's anything but that simple, but paradoxically, yes, it's that simple. But maybe it's because so many desire the chase for things that one can't imagine this to be the ultimate truth. So instead of going within and finding within oneself the correct questions... There is still so much searching and scouring being done in the labyrinth again, looking for a different answer. Getting back on the internet, spider web, www.666, using the mouse that is searching for its next moon cheese piece of click bait that lures one into the elaborate network of never-ending complexities and traps. And for those who might believe that they're being clever by saying, well, you're using it, aren't you? Maybe you're just part of the whole deception. Go ahead and think that, and deny the eternal truth which is directly within you. I've been telling everyone to unsubscribe from everything and get off of the web and go within. If you are not one of the agents of evil, then you have a heart and the spirit of the heart, which is constantly attempting to reach you. You do not need anything else other than a willingness to find the truth and to ask the correct questions. No one and nothing else is required. It's completely free. That's why the truth can never be for sale. Anything that is sold is not the truth. That's simple. Secondly, That's also why I have stated that I'm using death's tools at the moment and using these tools against it, and I have a small window of time to continue utilizing them, so I'm going to continue doing that. If you want to erroneously perceive me as being a part of death's design, then that's your choice. From Babylai Boon When you mention this chance at eternity... It feels a bit like looking towards the future for a goal, and perhaps creating another jail cell. How do we know there even is this opportunity, and that this isn't all there is? 
Thanks for your question, which is definitely an important one and something that will continue to be clarified and talked about in the months ahead. If you, along with the entire world, do not witness in the near future that which is impossible and completely unexplainable, then you can dismiss what is being said here entirely, and there will be no loss to you whatsoever. You can continue in the thought that this is all there is. If you want, you can just see this message and all that has been presented over the years on here as simply being another example of some cooked out person who thought they knew something when in fact they didn't know anything. What has been stated many times now is that this is a monumental opportunity to be free of this prison and is going to be presented to absolutely everyone not just the few who have found their way to this YouTube channel. Again, if the impossible isn't seen, and the undeniable message doesn't reach the eyes and ears of absolutely everyone throughout the entire world, then everyone will obviously just continue to go about their lives in the ways that they already are. And this heart will at best become a tiny footnote of menial interest in the annals of history. Nothing has been asked of anyone here, and nothing ever will be. I repeat, I've already told everyone to unsubscribe. I have said several times now, I'm a bum, which is the truth. Why would you listen to a bum? It's a good question. But, if one has comprehended the mystery... It is then seen that this is what death has done to the heart. Absolutely destroyed it and left it with nothing, which is exactly what a bum has. Nothing. That's the true jail cell that everyone is in, whether it's realized or not. I hope this is being made clear. Appreciation for the sacred is extremely important and is essential in correcting the vision that has been distorted and perverted within the heart, but appreciation in and of itself does not correct the entirety of the problem. A tiny percentage of individuals who might have appreciation for everything does not erase and extinguish the issues of the world, which should be blatantly obvious. There's far more to it than that. And there very much is an enormous problem, but the comprehension of that is up to every individual to see, or not see. One second sight truly does keep the blinders on. However, with all that said, in witnessing the impossible, those listening now can in that moment realize that they were one of the few that were given a sightline of what is to come. And hopefully in that moment... Your 2020 glasses will finally be put on, and one can piece together everything that has been shown here. From Angela J. I continue letting go of attachments. I know I can let go of it all except for two, my two adult sons. Will I be bound here because of my love for them, for not wanting to leave them until I've protected them in every way possible? Will I be bound here because I don't want to leave them until I've exhausted all efforts to help them out of this prison as well? Angela, thank you for your honesty. Your question is also a very important one. It first needs to be understood that true love is not what keeps anyone bound as a prisoner. What keeps one imprisoned is a desire to remain within this system. And there are a lot of methods the wardens of this place have devised to keep everyone attached to its construct. This is exactly why it was said before that one cannot have it both ways. How can an individual be free of this place and desire to remain within it and continue to be served by it? Absolutely everyone is being served by this rotten hellhole in various ways and there is an incredibly steep price to pay for that service. There are hidden price tags everywhere. I very much hope that this is being comprehended. You have said that you have two sons and they are both adults, which means that their choices are completely their own. Being your own individual means that you cannot protect them or anyone else from their own choices, 
especially in regards to the ultimate choice that is going to soon be presented to the entire world. Regardless, you exhaust all of your efforts because that's what the heart does. The heart never gives up. Ever. If that is your approach, then it's very honorable. Yet, despite one's efforts being given, the conundrum is going to be whether one is going to be able to let go of those who refuse to see, even if they are friends or immediate family. The choice that your two sons make will be their own choice, as will yours, and if you want your fate to be locked up with them, then there are consequences to that. I'm not being mean when I say this, that's just the straight up fact of it. I'm also not wanting to paint a picture that is about something false. I'm not here to do that. Family is essential, let that be understood to anyone listening, Family is essential. But at the same time, every member in a family is an individual, and it's well known to many that despite all of your efforts to get your friends and family members to see the problems of this place, they still have chosen over and over again to ignore it all, get angry at you, or just mock the problems outright. That's a choice, and choice always carries consequences. For those wondering about their children who are not adults and even quite young, unable to really make those choices completely on their own, well that's a whole other issue. I'm going to say straight out that I'm not going to answer that on this platform. That's a question that will be answered on the street. This is from username Wholesomest Handsomest. I asked before and I've seen some other people asking, just very curious on how you became you. There is nobody else I've seen or heard of who is like you, and I guess there's a reason you haven't been personal in your videos, but I'm really curious about how you got to know the things you know, or what had you take this narrow path in the first place. I think that I have chosen to be damned with everyone else. Yes, I am alone, and I have nobody, and bad things happen in my family, and I do try to be there for others, but I feel like I will hurt everyone around me, and other people are better off not knowing me. I'm sexually depraved and drug addicted. I come from a broken family and I am broken. I don't think I deserve anything good. And I don't want to leave everyone to be damned without me. The answer to your question is with your own question. How did you become you? There are far too many variables and circumstances to delve into to possibly produce an actual answer to that question. But in its astounding complexity... It's also necessary to go into that question for yourself and see exactly why you are who you are and why you find yourself in the situation that you're in. Why do you feel that people are better off not knowing you? Why are you sexually depraved and drug addicted? You're extremely vulnerable in saying all this, and I hope you realize that the heart is all about vulnerability. You're broken because the design of this place is meant to break you. It wants to break every last one of us, and it succeeds often. It leaves you feeling exactly as you said, undeserving of anything good, which is just another lie. I'm telling you straight up, I'm a bum, and I'm begging you for change. I'm begging you to change how you see yourself, because this prison system doesn't give a damn about any of us. Not one of us. It pretends to care through some of its systems, but that's just because it needs to use us. And once our usefulness to it is done, it kicks us immediately to the curb. You found yourself in a broken family, and in here, that's the rule, not the exception. It tosses the majority of everyone into these messed up, and hopeless situations. A broken family leaves a lot of heartache in its wake, and you are going through the turbulence of all that, believing that you're worthless. I'm here to tell you that you are not worthless. You are priceless. You are simply not seeing it right now. I want you to pick yourself up, even though you've been constantly beaten down. Pick yourself up with your completely broken heart and see that you are worth fighting for.
that in a single moment, absolutely everything can change for you. But you have to believe in the impossible, which is what you already are. You are the impossible. From Joshua Carpenter. In an earlier video, I commented about how I had an intuition that it was you whom I saw sitting at a table in a coffee shop near where I live. You had a stack of papers next to you and wore a white sweater. I do not know if my intuition was correct when I walked past to use the washroom and your name entered my mind. This happened on three separate occasions in Alberta. I can only tell you, Joshua, that I am most definitely not the individual that you saw in that coffee shop. You have questioned that you do not know if your intuition is correct, and this is the main aspect of your comment that should be drawn upon. That far too often, intuition is confused for projection. Intuition comes from the heart, and projection is derived from the mind. How to discern between the two? It's a very important example of the incredible difficulty that is constantly being fought between the two forces which reside within each of us. It's even in the words that you've used. Your name entered my mind. Exactly, it entered your mind and not your heart. It happened on three separate occasions. Of course it did, because all incantations and spells of the mind happen in formations of threes, since it takes three to manifest a connection. It's also the reason why the pyramid is a primary occult symbol. I will say, however, that your intuition might also simultaneously be attempting to tell you something about the individual in that coffee shop. Perhaps they very much are someone that you may want to introduce yourself to. That's obviously up to you to discern. I appreciate you reaching out. From Robin Baptiste you have paraphrased what is incredibly important to understand when saying, Yesterday I was clever and wanted to change the world. Today I am wise and I am changing myself. Thank you very much, Robin, for participating and sharing this. You are very much correct to state that it's a crucial part of the message. This is from username The Missing. You seem more lost today than I have ever heard you. You're angry and I get it. But it's hard enough to figure this out for ourselves, let alone to get upset for others not being able to navigate in the dark. Just as I had said to Joshua, this is a form of projection. Many that are listening to this heart now are confused or angry at the speaker because he was perceived as some kind of one-dimensional being, incapable of feeling anything. That's not the truth at all. I am an infinite heart-based being capable of feeling everything. There is no intelligence in feeling nothing. That's called apathy. And there is a heck of a lot of that in the human race. A general lack of true care or concern about anything outside of one's selfish, petty existence. Those who get offended by such statements simply prove out the fact that they are selfish and petty. Anyone who isn't selfish or petty knows through their own legitimate intelligence that they are not personally being referred to because they are not apathetic. You have stated that it's hard enough to figure this out for ourselves. It's then asked, why are you here listening at all? If you're figuring it out for yourself, then you should have never listened to a single thing that I have said or put forth. Continue to figure it all out for yourself, as you said. That's the basis of the parable given about the student being upset at the teacher for not telling him what he wanted to hear. Your comment is an exact projection of why that parable was given. You then say, let alone get upset for others not being able to navigate in the dark. That's a projection of fear. And I cannot get upset for anyone else. You are your own individual, making your own free will choices, just as everyone else is. I have made it very clear that we are in hell, not as a metaphor, but as an actual fact. There are many who find themselves on the surface level of this hell, which is everyone who is wearing a flesh monkey suit right now, and are extremely happy about being here on the temporary surface inside of their cellular prison uniform. 
On the other hand, there are the very few who know that they are in hell and are anything but happy about that. They are, in fact, beyond upset and angry at being an eternal slave, tossed around again and again like a piece of garbage and treated like a stray dog. After hearing this, you may find yourself completely hating this heart, simply because I'm not describing some false dream world to believe in while talking in a zend out monotone voice. There are tons of fake positivist New Age gurus out there who will give to you what you want, but the truth has nothing to do with personal desires and projections. Yes, we are in the dark, and the dark is not a nice place. If you feel that I am lost, then your search continues. I repeat, unsubscribe and follow no one. From Peace Story 35 Thank you for the blank screen audios. It's liberating to be able to listen and multitask some household chores without having to read the screen or be distracted by visuals. Well, there have been many comments over the years on here quite similar to this one, and it simply exemplifies the general lack of care or concern in regards to one's quality of listening. Multitasking is a delusion of the mind and splits one's attention, which turns quality into quantity. To multitask means that you are now divided, and a divided attention may as well be no attention at all. You are also stating that what you are listening to is not important enough to listen to with your complete and total attention. Its value is then diminished, and a diminished value is equivalent to being worthless. This is why the mind is about cuts, divisions, separations, and things like multitasking, and the heart is about unification and completeness. When you listen to someone, anyone, it doesn't matter to what or whom, Are you giving them your complete, undivided attention, or are you declaring that they are not worth that? I'm going to read a quote from Krishnamurti which states the same thing but in his words. When you give your whole attention to something, when you are completely listening, you listen to the totality of the thing. When you attend, there are no borders of inattention. When you so intensely listen, you are listening to the birds, the wind, the breeze among the leaves, the slightest whisper. In the same way, the very act of listening brings about total attention in which you see the totality and the whole significance and structure of what is being said. From David Strevens Incorrect vision? The world is broken? God help us? Interesting story. Did you make it up? Conflict is the essence of drama. Such a melodramatic load of nonsense. I loved it. Thanks for your comment, David. Your words are a perfect example of the mind which mocks the heart, the truth, and all of eternity. You loved it. What you called a load of melodramatic nonsense. Of course. The mind gets its kicks from the ridicule it projects onto those who are walking the narrow gate towards correcting the vision within themselves, calling it a load of nonsense. Light will continue to be shone upon examples such as yours, which is what this is all about. The correct vision revealing the incorrect vision. The very few who will walk in the truth, and the very many who will choose to continue believing in the lies. From Liam Jeffries I don't believe AI programs like MidJourney and ChatGPT are AI at all. I just don't. I'm concerned these things are portals to another realm and people are naively letting even more demonic ET forces into their lives. There's no way a computer could create the things MidJourney is producing, certainly not off a single prompt. Perhaps that's the great deception. Artificial intelligence isn't artificial at all. Thanks, Liam. Yes, this is what is meant when I have said that AI is pretending to be created for the first time again. As with everything in this reality, we are contending with a grand paradox, which is also noted in your statement of artificial intelligence isn't artificial at all. That's the dichotomy. 
It is artificial, and yet it isn't, meaning that it's real. It's tangible. Something that we are all contending with. Death is that artificial intelligence, and yet where is death? It cannot be seen. It's the hidden one. We all know about it because death is constantly doing its debt or death collections, and yet it's always a phantom. That's what AI is. And now at this point in the timeline, which is the final minute of the final hour, it is very close to coming out in the open entirely. And how many are getting excited about that? How many fake spiritualist guru truthers are even exposing themselves as either being an agent of death or totally ignorant, talking about the wonderful possibilities that AI is going to bring about for everyone? It should be completely obvious that the more technology that is produced, the more destruction there is to the earth. This parasite's technology guts and tears apart the earth faster than ever as it progresses forward, and a full-blown AI would bring that to metastasic efficiency. An example being that instead of taking years to deforest the Amazon, it would be able to tear it all down in a single day, all while proclaiming on its technology platforms that it's mindful of its impact on the earth. Well, yeah, of course it's mindful of its impacts. It knows exactly what it's doing, destroying it all. Its constant contradiction is to proclaim that it's helping the earth. All the major corporations are putting forth their propaganda lies all the time in this way. They say, we love the earth and we're treating it with care and concern, all while continuing to tear everything to shreds. The general population, many of whom are enjoying the benefits of the creature comforts conferred onto them by this destruction, don't give a damn about the consequences because it's believed that there aren't any, or it's just simply easy to ignore. This is also the paradox between the truth seeker, who defines everything here as just being an illusion of temporary experience in which nothing that we do here matters at all, and the one who sees and knows that this is anything but an illusion. That's what the false gift of one's second sight is all about, because the monkey prison suit human body is the matrix iPod of illusion that looks at everything through the false eyes of the mind, which has completely blinded the true vision of the heart. When one sees with their heart and stops looking through their mind, they know that the earth is not an illusion, and it very much is being destroyed, and the consequences of that destruction are very much real. The matrix illusion false sight is the lie of the mind that looks at all of creation as if it's just there to serve me, and the heart is the true vision that knows and feels the tremendous pain that is being caused every single day everywhere, but is almost entirely ignored. That pain treated as something meaningless and inconsequential. The heart is a witness to those who in their second sight of the mind believe that they see, yet remain blind. There certainly is a lot of naivety to this, and your concerns are very much on point. Thank you, Liam. From username Captain Kirk I hope you and others realize we are living in a simulation. There is very little free will that you believe we have. I won't repeat everything I've already just stated about the false belief that we are only in an illusion or simulation, but that is the paradox of it. The simulation is the incorrect or artificial vision that everyone looks through with their physical eyes that are connected to the physical brain and meat suit prison human monkey form. The simulation, illusion, or fallacy is that we are this prison monkey suit, egotistically identifying with it and looking at the earth with its eyes of destructive, consumptive desire. While the truth is that we are an infinite, heart-based being, being imprisoned by the cellular flesh-meat construct, unable to see in the dark, entrapped by the physical casing. As each of us consumes matter, we are consuming the light of the heart, until it is inevitably extinguished, hence to eat one's heart out. 
We are consuming the earth and we are consuming our heart. The circle is complete. Our free will is, in point of fact, the only thing that any of us truly does have here. Lastly, from Tim is here. You say as clearly as you can that we must all walk at least the first part of the journey by ourselves. I guess I never thought you'd take me up on my offer, but it was and remains an honest gesture. However, listening to you speak here, I'm reminded that I should have never even offered. What Tim is talking about here is the offer to welcome this homeless heart into his home. And I can tell you that there is nothing more honorable than doing that, Tim. How many look upon the homeless as being worthless, lazy, trash, a total waste of space? It needs to be said that anyone who would laugh at you, mock you, or belittle you for opening up your home and thus your heart is a product of evil and disease itself. I did see your earlier concerns in that regard, and it just shows how very broken this whole place is that you would have to question your intention in this way. What kind of sadistic and twisted pervert makes fun of someone for putting forth an intention of generosity? What kind of deranged and demented person laughs at and insults someone for being benevolent and kind? I noticed your concern in a comment that you deleted, and it's an obvious example of fear and evil doing its utmost to tear you down, and this should be noted by everyone. Disease in its egotistical ugliness promotes itself as being the one that can lead you towards perfect health. That's how upside down this prison system and its warden is. No one walks up to cancer and asks it for advice about health. Who would ask cancer... What is it that I should do to be perfectly healthy? Then cancer says, follow me. I'll show you the fastest way to get to perfect health. Who would go up to the darkness of death and ask, death, please tell me what you know about life. Then death says, follow me. I will lead you to life everlasting. Would it be a surprise then when you get led directly down a dark path that brings you directly to disease and death? Obviously not, but that's what a psychopathic lunatic is hoping you don't see. It wants you to be defeated and in constant fear, and becomes obsessed in its lunatic pursuit of those it targets. Disease targets health, because that's its program, and just like the schoolyard bully, it picks out those it believes to be the weaker targets. As an unhinged crackpot, it waits in the shadows every day to pummel their target in every way it can, over and over and over again. That's the tight grip of evil, and it's not some kind of goal to be unchained from that grip. It is necessary to do so. The mind is disease and the heart is health. Evil also constantly exposes itself by mocking the heart. As difficult as it is, one must continue standing in the truth. Even when the entire world hates you and curses you, you have to rise above it. No matter how many times it's kicked you down, you have to get back up. Because the heart never gives up. Ever.